Hey, how's it going? And welcome to episode 5 of The Ultimate Iron Man. And make sure to catch up from episode 1 if you're new to the series and just tuning in. But we just finished off 43 Prayer for Overheads in the last video. And of course, you know me, we're back at the Teak Tree. Everything we have right now is disposable, so we essentially have nothing. And I was thinking of what things I can do to take advantage of the situation because I don't know if there's ever going to be a time again when we have nothing on us and nothing in a storage like Zora or Hispori or whatever. One thing I was thinking of is that because you can't bring any weapons or armor on Entrana, I was looking at all the Entrana quests, but there's nothing I can do right now since they all require combat related stuff, which is something I don't want to do for a while. And then there's also Recruitment Drive and Fremnik Trials which also have kind of weird inventory setups but I can't do those right now either. But one quest that I can do that requires 20 free inventory spaces is Death Plateau, so we're gonna get started on that today. Of course, I couldn't just leave you hanging. There is 60 woodcutting, all with a steel axe too, but that means we could cut you trees, uh, which I don't think I'll be doing for a while. But once we start doing birdhouse runs, I think you logs will be the most convenient ones to get, so that's pretty cool. In the last video, we went to Last Man Standing to put all of our money in the coffer there, so let's go back over there and take out everything that we have. This guy in Lumbridge, Purdue, right over here, sells back certain items. There's like a whole list of them. Um, but we could buy our Artie Cloak back here for 200 GP, which is really nice. So we got the Artie Cloak and we can get back to Artie when we need to. There's just something so simple about this outfit that I really, really, really like. I don't know what it is. For the quest, we need an iron bar, so I'm going to grab a pickaxe from up here and mine an iron ore and eventually make our way over to a furnace and then smelt it there. But yeah, right up here at this guard tower, there's two bronze pickaxes that spawn. We also need 10 cooked trout for the quest which means that we have to get some fishing supplies. You need 20 fishing, which we haven't even trained yet, by the way. We got this all through questing, 26 fishing. And then you also need 15 cooking. So we'll just cook a few foods, then we'll start fishing the trouts and hopefully not burn too many. We're also gonna need a tinderbox. Going to the fishing shop over here to buy the supplies we need. Also gonna sell off these sapphire rings since we're here. I got the fly fishing rod for the trout, but I also got a regular fishing rod so we can catch some uh, sardines and herring so that way we can train our cooking up. Okay, and 15 cooking is all we need. So I don't know why I bought so much fishing bait. We're done with this forever. And we can move on to fly fishing now, get that trout. I meant to point this out before, but we got a spirit seed from a bird's nest. I was looking at the wiki, apparently that's a less than 1% chance of getting that, but rest in peace to the dream. Definitely can't use that for a while. And then also we got a bird's egg, which we could turn into the woodcutting guild for 100 prayer XP and a chance for the evil chicken outfit but we're also not going to get access to the woodcutting guild for a while either. I don't plan doing any of the Zaya favors until after we're done fire making. We need 10 bread for the quest, which I could just buy right here from the baker. We have all the trout we need now, so we can go ahead and drop the rod, drop the feathers, drop the tinderbox, and let's go ahead and mine the iron that we need for the iron bar. Because right over here there's iron, and there's a furnace in Arty. And there we go, there's the iron bar we need. The quest is in Birthorp, and luckily there's a minigame to teleport that takes us straight to Birthorp. The last item that we need for the quest is the Asgardian Ale, which you can pick up right here. Let's get this quest done. Okay, and the Death Plateau quest is done. The attack level went from level 10 to level 19, so I guess there goes the uh, 11 combat with overheads pure. Level 14 combat now, but as long as we don't get hit points XP, that's fine. Uh, we can now smith claws as well. Check this out. I feel like freaking Wolverine. Yo, do you guys remember Shredder from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? So I feel like right now. And doing this quest also unlocks the ability to buy climbing boots from Tenzing, and it only costs 12 coins. It's kind of annoying to get to because you have to like run all the way around this path here, but at least it's essentially free. Uh, I was checking Purdue to see if we could reclaim them from there, but you can't. I think that's the only way to get them. Or the Bounty Hunter store, which I won't be doing. But the climbing boots will be our best in slot boots, I believe, until Rune. Because it has a plus two strength bonus. And a little bit of defense. The next thing that we're going to do now is probably the thing I've been looking forward to doing the most on the Ultimate Iron Man, and that is train construction. The ways to train construction on an ultimate are so different from any other style of playing, and I think that sets a really good example of having to think outside the box to play RuneScape. If you've ever gone through these skill guides over here when you click on your skill, there are so many different options. You can see how long these scroll bars are. There's so many different options of things to make, so many different potential ways to train the skill. I can't wait, man. This is gonna be fun. So let's home teleport, get out of here, and get this thing started. For the first method I want to try doing to train construction, I'm gonna empty out everything I don't need. So everything besides the bronze pick and the GP. So there's the prices of everything that we're selling right here. 
because this is all we need. If you recall, I think it was a couple of videos ago, we just bought our house, but we never touched the skill, never trained construction, never did anything. We simply just bought the house for 1000 GP and by default, it's placed in Remington. And that's where we're at now. So we are gonna mine an inventory of clay right here in Remington. All right, we got our full inventory of clay and in the center of Remington right here, there's a well. And I believe we can just use the clay straight on the well. If not, maybe we'll try the sink. I think just use it right on there. Okay, let's try the sink actually. Okay, apparently using the clay on the sink does nothing either. So maybe we have to buy a bucket. Okay, we'll just buy a bucket from the general store here. I guess we gotta sell a soft clay for that. Wow, zero GP. Okay, let's go ahead and get one of those. Now, if we take a run over to the well over here, fill up the bucket with water and use the soft clay on the bucket of water. Okay, this is gonna be a very tedious process. So maybe for the future, I'll buy like 10 or 13, I guess, uh, buckets. Hey, I have a joke for you. Why did the blind guy fall into the well? He didn't see that well. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. You don't have to all clap at once. Okay, we got our full inventory of soft clay. This is gonna be the first time entering our house. It may not be much, but it's home. <laughs> Uh, I freaking love this. I love building up from nothing. I think that's like the greatest feeling in the game. So we're gonna go into building mode now and start building clay fireplaces with this. I don't think we need a saw or a hammer or any tools. I hope not at least. Oh, we need level three. Frick. Okay, so we're gonna buy a few things. First thing we're gonna buy is a watering can. Next to every allotment patch in the game, there's always a gardener that sells farming supplies. And we can just buy a watering can right here. This is going to be really stupid and probably a big waste of money, but we are going to buy six bag plants one. Yeah, right here. They cost 1,000 GP each. I don't even want to look at the cash stack. <laughs> okay, let's, let's just go build our things. Was it worth it? Probably not. All right, let's try this again. Uh, apparently, you get farming XP from planting these as well. So I guess we'll be matching up our farming and construction. And it doesn't say there's any farming requirements, so hopefully there isn't. Yeah, cool. We just plant that right away. You know what, this is going to provide some nice atmosphere for the house. It may not be the most efficient setup, but it's going to look really nice. And once we build that one, level 2 construction and level 2 farming. And it looks like my calculations were correct. This will get us to 3 farming and 3 construction. So now we can go ahead and build the clay fireplace and keep on building that and removing it over and over. I guess one clay fireplace is essentially the same as the 1k GP I just spent for each of those. So three soft clay is going to save us 1k GP each, I guess. Oh, we need a saw and hammer. <laughs> this is what the game mode's all about. It's all about learning. That's why we're doing this. I'm going to go ahead and cheat and store the watering can in the tool leprechaun. All right, well, let's go ahead and buy a Chronicle and charge that up. And Chronicles are allowed on Trana, so I'm just going to buy like five charges, I guess. That'll last us for a bit. Put those in there, and now we can head over to Varrock. In the Varak Estate Agent's house, there's a spawn for a saw, so we're gonna take that. See, once we get a tool store built in the house, it'll be really nice. We don't have to worry about like running all the way here for a saw or running around the general stores getting hammers and whatever else we need. I wasn't planning on doing this at first, but I think we'll just go ahead and save a trip later on and just buy a bunch of nails right now. I never thought it'd be so hard to buy nails, but the steel nails are sold out on almost every world. For some reason, steel nails are 3 GP, but iron nails are 5 GP. I'm not sure why the iron nails are more expensive, but that's just the way it is. You can tell I really didn't want to waste the soft clay. But we're all set, we're all ready for real now to start training construction, and we're gonna train until level 10, and then we got quests to do. By the way, you get 10 construction XP for each piece of soft clay that you use. Okay, level 10 construction means that we can now do the Tower of Life quest. That's the only requirement for it and you get a 1,000 construction XP reward from completing it. The last item that we need for the Tower of Life quest is a pair of gloves, and there's a pair that spawns right here in the Lumberage Swamp where Father Ernie is. So now we got everything we need, and we can do this quest. All right, Tower of Life is done. Pushes us from 10 to 14 construction. Uh, I got a craft level out of that too. Mainly just want to do this now for the construction XP. Uh, we also unlock the Tower of Life, which is going to be really useful later on when we start collecting secondaries. Like, this is pretty much, well, at least for Iron Man, this place is pretty much a necessity. For Ultimates, I'm going to assume it's a necessity as well, specifically for Red Spider's eggs. And the more Artie Diary tiers we get done, the more noted drops we get from different monsters around here. And then we also got the Builder's Outfit out of this, which enhances the Beckon emote. So without the outfit on, if you just do a regular Beckon, that's what it looks like, you know, pretty normal, right? But when you put the outfit on, for some reason it turns into a catcalling freak. 
Uh, we can't store the outfit in the house yet, so I'm just gonna drop it. It's really easy to get back though, so eventually once we do build the armor case or the wardrobe or whatever it is, we can just get back and store it in there. But it doesn't give like any perks or boost or anything. There's no like construction XP boost. It's literally just a cosmetic outfit that enhances the Beckon emote. That looks pretty cool too. I went to go do some AFK woodcutting at the good old tea tree, and we just got 61 woodcutting, which means we can now use a dragon axe. Well, thank you very much there, Mr. Genie. That's going to give us level 7 herb lore. All right, just left the tea tree spot, and I'm curious, will these teak logs sell to the general store for anything? Oh, they do. Maybe every time I leave the tea tree spot now, I'll just bring an inventory of logs and just sell them because, you know, why not? But right now we gotta sell off everything. I think I get more money back if I sold the steel axe to Bob's axe store, but I don't think it's gonna be that much of a difference. I'm gonna get rid of everything right now because we need inventory space. And I also wanna weigh less too, so we're gonna get rid of these as well. And we can't bring any weapons or stat boosting armor on Tron either. So I'll probably have to drop the Arty Cloak too, but the Chronicle should be okay. Okay, let's try taking the boat to Entrana. I have a feeling that we can't bring it. Yeah, okay, so let's go ahead and just drop that. We'll just buy it back for 200 GP when we need it. But yeah, now we can go to Entrana. So right now what I'm doing is hopping worlds and picking up these plank spawns. There's two planks that spawn right here on Entrana. I'll show you on the map how to get there, but here's the shipyard to Entrana. You just run around this way through the church and right up here. That's where the plank spawns. So what we're going to do is go back and forth between the house and Remington and Entrana, picking up these planks and training construction that way. And I shouldn't get timed out from hopping worlds either, because as you can see, I have 24 free inventory spaces, which means 12 worlds, and you could hop up to 15 worlds every 4 minutes. What I'm going to do is walk back to the house, because right now we weigh a lot, and the more you weigh, the faster your run goes down. But after we use up all the planks, we're going to weigh almost nothing, so I'll run on the way back to Entrana. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is build a kitchen right here that's going to cost us 5k, but it's worth it. We're going to have it forever. Uh, I'm going to start building larders, because they use the most amount of planks per build, at least from what we can make so far. Far, and no matter what construction material you're using, you always get the same amount of XP per material. So for example, each piece of soft clay gives you 30 construction XP, uh, each plank you use gives you 29 construction XP, and so on for every single supply. So it makes sense to build the thing that uses the most amount of planks. Um, actually, before we move on though, I'm going to build everything else. I'm going to like, build the bookcase and build the chairs because I want my house to look nice. This Entrana Firebird sometimes gets in the way, but I have my NPC attack option set to right click only, or you can set to hidden as well. And that way if I accidentally click on it, I'm not going to attack it. Oh, we got the first few upgrades we're making to the house. So first thing is the beer barrel. If we bring an empty beer glass, we can fill it up with unlimited beer as much as we want. If only it worked that way in real life, dude, I'd be freaking... Well, probably dead. And then we got a shelf space over here. We're gonna build the wooden shelves one. And what do we even get from here? Let's see. Once we build it, we can search it. So now we can get a kettle, a teapot, and a cup anytime we want. Later on, we'll be able to make a tea that boosts construction by three. Uh, so that's what we need that for. Not that it really matters that much, but I moved the room up here so the larder would be as close as possible to the POH portal. Uh, and in case you don't know how to move your house around, go to the house options, go to viewer, and you can move and rotate any room anywhere you want. Hey, 400 total level. Okay, so I'm going to add something else into this rotation, I guess you could call it. Uh, right down here on the south end of Port Sarim, there's charter ships. And from these charter ship crew members, you can actually buy a bunch of different supplies. And what we're going to do now each time is buy 10 buckets of sand, 10 soda ash, and now let's head over to Entrana. Oh yeah, and a glass blowing pipe too, we'll need one of those. And right when you get to Entrana, there's a furnace right here, and in the furnace you can use one bucket of sand and one soda ash to make molten glass. So we're just going to make all, and we can train crafting this way. Get 20 XP per, so that'll be 200 XP per inventory at the furnace. Now what I'm going to do is make sure I'm walking, click on the spot all the way up here, and we can just start blowing molten glass. We'll just make the highest thing we can, which is oil lamps, apparently. And then once we get there, we'll just drop all this stuff, including the glass blowing pipe, because all this is super cheap to get. And I guess it's like a way to implement crafting into our construction training. As it is right now, for each trip we do, we get 450 crafting XP and 696 construction XP. I think it's pretty decent, considering we're like level 19 for both apparently. There's a pickaxe spawn right here in Remington, that's going to help us right now. At level 23 construction, we can go ahead and build the wooden shelves 3, which have even more stuff in them. We need 6 soft clay for that, so that's what we need to pick for. And now if we search it, we have all this stuff as well. Hey, we got unlimited beer glasses for our unlimited beer. Bottoms up. We just got level 22 crafting, which means we can now craft sapphire necklaces and that could potentially be a really, really important level in the future. I'm not quite sure yet. It depends on how I decide to train fire making, but that could be really good. 27 construction, which means we could build the easy stash units now. Oh my gosh, inside the larder is my content. 
33 construction is a very important level. That means we can build oak larders now. And oak larders are something we'll be making for a very long time. Not right now though, because we don't have a really efficient way of getting oak planks, but eventually. But I think it's a good place to wrap up the video for today. Here's the stats right now. I'm just gonna finish up using the rest of these nails. We'll do that at the start of the next video. And then as for the XP per hour, here's what we've been getting. It's been about two hours since I started tracking the progress. And as you can see, it's about 5.6K construction XP per hour and about 3.8k crafting XP per hour. And I also end up going through maybe like 1k GP per hour. So it doesn't really cost much money at all for the crafting XP. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. And I know I keep on saying this, but I'm having so much fun on this account. But yeah, I hope you all have a wonderful day and I will see you again next time.